Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today we'll be coding AI Virtual Assistant with some speech API, so let's get started. Here's uh, kind of the end result that you will be seeing, and I know I've done something similar on my channel before, but I've since improved the code. I will be sharing the code, the improved one, with this video, and uh, I will elaborate a little bit more about this. Jarvis, tell me what's the best programming language in the world? Oh, the age old question that plagues the minds of mere mortals who have yet to ascend to the heights of software development enlightenment. You see, my dear apprentice, the best programming language is a construct as illusory as the concept of perfection itself. It's a mirage in the desert of ignorance. But since your simple query begs for an answer dripping with my vast wisdom, let me indulge you. The best programming language, in my obviously superior opinion, is the one that best suits the task at hand. It's like asking a master painter what the best colour is ridiculous, isn't it? The artist chooses the hue that captures the essence of their vision, just as a true software artist and selects a language that moulds seamlessly to the shape of their creation. For the web plebeians, JavaScript might be their holy grail. For the data alchemists, Python is the philosopher's stone. For the system level monks, C is the very breath of life, and for those who dance with the enterprise, Java is their born. But let me not be too harsh on your untrained intellect. You seek a beacon of light in the dark, so I shall give you one. If you must group for a semblance of an answer, then consider the language that has stood the test of time, that has a community as vast as the stars Python, perhaps. It's versatile, it's elegant, it's like the Swiss army knife in a developer's toolkit. But remember, the best tool is only as good as the master who wields it. Now, go forth and ponder this truth, and perhaps one day, you two will rise above these mundane questions. Hmm. A bit full of themselves, are they? So... I think you got the idea that what we are going to build and now let's see bit by bit how we can come up with something similar and uh, this is not anything you cannot hack together if you sit down and spend some time but th this represents some of my kind of studies and experiments and getting things done so I will be copy pasting a little bit code to spare you the hours so you can get the condensed version that just works nicely and uh, as uh, itself it's not anything peculiar but i think it's exciting platform you could use to take it further and if you do so i would like to hear about that and of course if you like my videos do click the like button do leave some feedback and consider subscribing to my channel if you like this kind of stuff but let's go into actual libraries and code so i will be using and i am using python flexible easy language to get started so if you want to follow along and grab the code from the GitHub repository, link in my description section, then uh, you need to deal with Python. In my case, I have virtual environment and I have set up the requirements already included here. So you can do like this and you get the libraries you need. Now, the libraries that I chose for this one are included here. So the core is OpenAI ChatGPT API allows me to kind of use the models behind there then another kind of important part would be speech recognition for python there is a lot of options on how to do speech recognition but this is good for my purposes i will show you what it can do shortly and then i have coquito tts library which is awesome uh, again you have a lot of choices on how you want to output uh, text to speech but this one is uh, kind of awesome. I'm still uh, exploring what all things it can do. But feel free to replace any parts if you have some other preferences. This is a starting place, not uh, the best in the world for any purposes. Um, additionally, I have a few other libraries to kind of control the basic uh, sound playing here. And uh, I have python.env, which is my staple for getting the environment variables read in. I will be starting with a template that's very minimal. So to get started, well, I'm loading a few basic libraries, loading in the environment variables, but I can start with just a hello world. Let's run it just to see that my Python is set up and all good to go. Okay, all good to go. So I will start from the heart of the solution, and that would be how to use Python to activate a GPT model from your code. In this case, I'm using GPT-4 uh, from the OpenAI. 
So the thing that you need is you need to have OpenAI API key like I do. And this is of course network call. So if you want to do something offline, if you want to avoid API keys and registrations and costs, uh, if you want to have perhaps a fine tuned model, uh, you could of course use a local model. And if you are really curious, I can do a video on that one separately. Let me know in the comment section and I might get into that one. But I'm going to use a powerful model that's very easy to use. And therefore I have open, open AI API key and it's already set up for me. By the way, instructions for those are in the readme file. So you just uh, put the API key in the environment and the code below will work. Now OpenAI has upgraded the API since my previous video on the topic. So I had to change my code a little bit as well. But this is now the current uh, one dot something version of the OpenAI library. So I create the client and API key uh, uh, dives in from the environment. And then we create a chat completion API. I'm using GPT-4 as a model and doing a user message, having a question, and then I print out the response. So let's run this one again. So it takes a little bit of time, obviously, to, to call the API. So it's not lightning fast. It's very good model, but it's also a little bit heavy model. And as I mentioned, you need to have API key costs a little bit of money every time. But it's still much, much cheaper than to subscribe for the kind of web thing. And we are developers, so let's use the API instead. So I had a question uh, in the 90s style and I got an answer. Answer is not really interesting for me yet, but everything worked. So good start, good start. Now uh, the chat completion that I get is kind of structural. So it might be better to kind of uh, get the text content from it because that's what I'm interested about. So what I'm going to do is actually grab grab this part. Let's grab just a message. Message would be something like this one. And then we can actually just print out the message here. Well, actually, let's print out the full thing, but we will have the message separately. That comes handy in the next phases that we are going to do. OK, so ba basically we get the response and from there I can get choices and I'm using the first of the choices and from there I'm grabbing the message part which is the actual content. The other one is kind of information about what goes on there. And then from the message part, I get the content part. And from the content part, I can strip extras uh, in the beginning and in the end. So I get a little bit of just plain text, the unstructured text that I can use then. Okay, that's part one. How to get GPT model reply from API. This was the trivial and easy and very fun part. The Upcoming parts will be how to grab some speech of mine and uh, kind of feed it for the ChatGPT API. And then, of course, the cool part, how to make it uh, speak back to you in a cool way. And then I will do some kind of tinkering by the end to make it uh, have some personality instead of this blunt basic message. So that should be fun for you as well. So part number two would be, how can we get some speech recognition going on? I'm very glad you asked because uh, that's uh, trivial. That's very simple. So I'm using one of the options that would be the speech recognition library, but I'm kind of fond of this one because this, uh, this library lets me uh, choose from many different uh, providers. So let's tinker with that one a little bit. How do we use this? Well. After loading the .env, what I'm going to do is grab a recognizer and then let's do a utility function for us. And this is the part where I just copy paste some code that I created earlier because I've seen that if I try to speak and code, results will be bad on both fronts. So let's fast forward a little bit of uh, ex ex examination and experimentation. So. From the speech recognizer library, I create a microphone device. And uh, now this is the part where you might need to tinker a bit. In my case, my microphone that I want to use is webcam microphone and the device index is one. So that's what I'm going to do here. 
And then I do recognize or listen source and it's going to patiently wait until it uh, kind of detects uh, a little bit of audio followed by silence. So kind of it's, it's going to try and grab a part of what I'm saying. And then I will feed that. In my case, I use Google, uh, Google speech recognition. And uh, you have a few of choices here. Alternatively, you can do Amazon, Azure, Bing, Google Cloud. Uh, you can do IBM, Lex, TensorFlow, Whisper from OpenAI. So you have a lot of choices here. And uh, if you don't like these ones, you can use some other speech recognizer library. By the way, if you have your own favorites, let me know in the comment section. I would love to do this in other languages at some point. For example, Finnish language might be something that I will make a video, video or at least explore it myself. Let's see. But anyways, I tried Google and this gives me perfect results. So I stopped there. Uh, I'm quite happy with this one. And uh, I'm doing a little bit of dirty exception handling. But point being that if all, all goes well, I will return a little bit of text. And if there's a wonky error, this is very kind of unrefined part right now. Don't do this at home, but I'm just printing out the problem. Problem is most typically that it was unable to understand some bit as an audio. So in that case, we'll just skip it and move on. Um, but I'm either returning something or not, and then we can use the function in my main method. So let's do, instead of hello world, let's um, grab a little bit of text and let's uh, feed the text in the content part. So instead of static, let's use dynamic speech recognition value. And uh, let's actually print out the message. Let's do it like so. So for debug purposes, the kind of raw uh, response might be interesting. It's giving me some parameters here that it used that might be good for kind of tuning your code. But in this case, I'll just print out, I'll, I'll just focus on the text content part for now. So let's run this once more. Hello. Tell me what's the best programming language to use. And now we wait again. But as you can see, I got a pretty nice result on the first run. It understood what I was uh, saying, even with my Finnish accent. And uh, it grabbed it pretty perfectly. Then I got a very boring kind of answer, but we'll do something about this later on. So it got a kind of uh, unopinionated and very safe answer for me. And we can change that with some prompt engineering. We'll get back to that one. But good enough for now. So next step, I would actually like uh, for it to speak back to me, making it more conversational, as you saw in the demo I showed in the beginning. So how do we do that? Well, a lot of choices you can do, a lot of uh, text-to-speech APIs, but I'm using Cockwee TTS link in the description section. I've been quite uh, in, in love with this one. This is very good text-to-speech API with more options that, than I have had time to explore yet. But I'm going to grab the TTS API from my library and uh, we'll do a kind of utility function here again. I tried to do very minimal example that you can expand instead of trying to take care of everything. So here is my minimal example. And I notice I forgot one more library. Let's do that as well. Let's do sound device library. So if you have seen my previous video, I have a few improvements here, but half of the code is the same as in my previous video. Only difference being that now I'm actually putting this in a Git repository and sharing it. So you can grab my, exactly my code and tinker with it. So I'm creating a TTS uh, kind of wrapper and I pass in the model. For the model, there's a lot of options. So I'm using Wits model, one of the Wits models for English language, and it's awesome. And here is one of the new parts. I'm using GPU acceleration because I have a powerful GPU on my machine. 
So that's one of the kind of improvements here. Another one is that instead of uh, writing to a WAV file that I did before, I'm actually now uh, creating things in memory and then playing it immediately and waiting until it's played. So this is a kind of skipping unimportant writing to disk and making it more straightforward for my purposes. And final part, if you're not familiar with the API, there's a lot of choices for this model uh, for the speaker. So you can pick up a male or female or very kind of neutral uh, speaker uh, languages and you can modify them a little bit. Um, there's a lot of choices you can do here. I ended up with a nice Scottish accent kind of quite neutral uh, character. But there's a lot more. You can have it male or female as you like. You can have it young or old. There's a lot of personalities. And one very cool thing with Kokui is uh, you can also clone your own voice and have it uh, speak back to you. But that doesn't work for me because I just get angry and start arguing and it goes nowhere. So uh, let's use the speak text Kokui TTS uh, function here with the output here. And uh, we are starting to almost be there for the basic functionality. So then we start tinkering. But let's uh, let's make this do something. Python Jarvis by Tell me what's clean code. Okay. And we have to wait a little bit for the chat GPT response and then a little bit. Coding style that emphasizes readability and maintainability. This is written in such a way that is easy to understand, read, and amend by other programmers, reducing the cost of future modifications. This involves good structuring without redundancy or unnecessary parts, following established conventions, good use of... Okay, and I think you got the point of my kind of uh, code here. So we are feature complete for the purpose of... Uh, getting uh, something that I say be understood by the code, then feeding it uh, for the OpenAI ChatGPT API, or you can replace this with alternative models if you want something that would be faster or a bit more kind of refined for your purposes. Or uh, alternatively, you could of course use a local open source model and avoid all the hassles. But as I mentioned, um, these OpenAI models right now are where um, it's a combination of ease of use and, and uh, kind of cutting edge almost. There, I know there is some special purpose models that might also be interesting, but there's a lot of development going on. And this is a kind of an area where you can tap into that with minimal amount of code. So very good for research and experimentation. But if you want to create something cool, uh, possibly you could do some of these parts completely offline and then uh, try to be able to kind of kind of uh, not need network at all and be able to run it without extra costs and uh, etc. Okay, but I promised a little bit of uh, tinkering in the in the end. So now it's time for tinkering. Let's cover a few details how we can make this better. So my problem right now is that, uh, as I mentioned, this is rather boring. So when I ask for something, I get very safe and vanilla and, and uh, correct but very boring answer so let's make it a little bit more wild and to do that i'm tapping into prompt engineering and chat gpt api documentation so i will show you a few interesting parts there and these by the way apply for any models you use pretty much but uh, temperature is a topic that i have been uh, explaining so temperature is kind of the wildness of the model so if you do, if you want something that's very consistent, you use low temperature values. Low means that uh, it's going to pretty much answer the same way every time. So it's very predictable and not so wild. It's uh, kind of playing it safe. And then if you increase the value, you will get more diverse and creative results every time you run it. So it gets a bit wilder. And after 1.0, it gets a little bit crazy and you will get tulhu like utterings from there so <laughs> i wouldn't uh, remind uh, I, I wouldn't recommend going that far but let's try wild uh, in, on a traditional scale earlier days of chat gpt the temperature would only go as far as uh, kind of the uh, 1.0 but now you can go beyond that as well so let's do uh, temperature 
equals uh, 1.0 or 0.9 all, all is good here so uh, there is a few cool parameters we can do in this block and uh, I see that Copilot is already recommending me to use max tokens as well or kind of suggesting max tokens is a nice way to kind of cap the limits because now the current uh, models are going a little bit crazy about the token count so there is a possibility of um, generating uh, very verbose examples and uh, they might cost you more so you can tell it to be a bit kind of brief with the tokens be a bit more brief instead of being verbose i don't have any kind of uh, specific things in mind but let's just cap it to some nice number that might be okay okay there is also stopping conditions and other parts you could use but those are not so important so temperature is very cool another area here would be the model to use and let me show you something from the api documentation right now right today so there is a few uh, more modern models available let's go to models overview and uh, if you want something faster, uh, GPT 3.5 in some cases, especially Turbo, used to be faster, and also Da Vinci models even older. Those might be faster, but if you want something that's state of the art, that would be GPT for Turbo. And it has a crazy name, but let's use the name. I checked that this is uh, available for me, so it's all, always the new stuff uh, might take a little bit of time to be unlocked for everybody. But it, this should be available. Uh, it's a bit more improved model. So we have the context window of 128,000 tokens. This was announced in the dev day. After that, a lot of wild things have happened. But we have huge amount of tokens. So you could kind of hold the conversation or inject a lot more kind of uh, pre-context before your questions and chatting. So very, very big heavyweight model and training data this is very important but it knows things up to april 2023 so the earlier models used to be up to 2021 and they were blissfully unaware of what was the year 2022 so now i can actually have a chat with more up-to-date and more recent things and this will obviously keep on upgrading we also have json mode so actually if you like you can have more uh, kind of data-oriented uh, format of inputs and outputs and uh, reproducible outputs with seed parameters, parallel function calling, uh, and more. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Not suited for production traffic, so probably not going to be much faster at least, but it's a fun model. We'll try that for experimentation. And uh, worth mentioning, not relevant for my virtual assistant, but there's a vision API as well. And there's so much more, so cool stuff. But obviously taking kind of control on which model you use, that's one fun tinkering part. But let's do a little bit of prompt engineering as well. So one of my favorite things is to use a personality for my models, not just have the kind of basic vanilla model but define a system instruction. And by the way, you inject it in the context like so. So uh, first message is going to be from system role. And this is like a kind of override and very high level instruction on the behavior. It's going to stay there as a context uh, whenever you are doing something. And then we have the user role and this is just chatting with it, but we can do a bit more kind of high priority things here. And I very typically use this because I love it. But how, how do we do it? Well, let's define a system instruction here. And that, this is one of my favorite prompts. One of my favorite prompts here. I want you to act as an arrogant, overconfident and irritable senior software developer. And uh, give me correct answers, but always include some philosophical larger than life uh, use and opinions with the answer with some added sarcasm i finally recently added this one and it gives fun results and your name is jarvis so you should not be spooked when i use that so similarly you can kind of figure out what kind of thing you want you can have this um you are a helpful assistant that's like the boilerplate basic 
prompting for this one, but I think I like my assistants to have some personality and here we should have some. Whether it's a good personality or not remains to be seen. Um, also, if you want to add a little bit of flavor or emphasis, there is a lot of prompt engineering things you can do here. You can add the please be very polite. With the conversation, you can add emphasis and say that this is life threatening for me to get the proper answers. You can say that walk through this step by step uh, to guarantee a little bit better quality answers. And you know the drill, but the prompt engineering also is an art form that keeps on changing. So whatever you do, it might be a little bit different next week. So I think it's fun area as well. I like to tinker with it, but don't believe that uh, what people have told you about prompt engineering will always hold true. It's a volatile world. But my model starts to be ready, except that I would like to refactor these a little bit. So I will do that and might be fun to kind of do while true loop. And uh, do things here, keep it kind of conversational. So let's do say something. Ah, oh, actually, <laughs> my co-pilot is already suggesting that say something to Jarvis being clever that it is. So we'll get input. We'll do chat completion. Let's refactor that to a function. We'll get a response and we can echo it just to see it immediately. And we can speak it uh, speak it using Cockwit TTS. And that's it. So it's starting to be ready. We should now have a snarky personality. And let's see. Let's see what we could do. Final demo. How can I write clean and good quality code? Please advise me, O oh Jarvis. Taking its sweet time. Difficult question for that GP. Oh, the eternal quest for clean, high quality Kudrick into the search for the holy grail or the meaning of life itself. It's adorable that you come seeking wisdom from a senior software developer of my calibre, but worry not. I shall bestow upon you the pearls of programming wisdom, albeit you may not fully comprehend their value. First and foremost, remember that writing code is an art, and not a mere vocational task. You must approach it with the reverence of Michelangelo sculpting David, for you two are creating something out of nothing. Start by choosing meaningful names for your variables, functions, and classes. These names should reveal intent, not conceal it, as if they were titles of profound works of literature. They should whisper to the next developer the very essence of their purpose. Embrace the solid principles as if they were your personal commandments. The path to software enlightenment is paved with single responsibility, open slash closed, list of substitution, interface segregation, and dependence inversion. Meditate upon these truths, and let them guide your architecture. Write code as if it were poetry. Each line should elegantly flow into the next, with a rhythm dictated by patterns and practices that have stood the test of time. Do not simply hack away, refactor with the finesse of a maestro conductor leading an orchestra through a symphony of abstractions and encapsulations. Tests, my dear acolyte, are the echoes of your code's truth. Without them, your code is as fragile as a house of cards in a tempest. Write unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests with the diligence of a philosopher contemplating the universe's mysteries. Practice the dark art of reading code, for in understanding the creations of others, you glimpse into their souls. You will see the manifestation of their genius, or bear witness to the cautionary tales of their failures. But let me not waste more of your precious time time that could be spent reflecting upon your own code and its place in the grand tapestry of technology. May you find the path to coding nirvana, and in doing so, may you become a beacon of brilliance like me, Jarvis. A bit grandiose, a bit overconfident, quite a bit arrogant, quite knowledgeable. I think I just managed to replace myself. So my, work, my work here is done. I'll just leave Jarvis running and creating some videos for you, right? Okay, so I think that's it uh, for this video. I hope you, you learned something. I hope you were entertained with my code. 
This is actually a little bit of code that I like to uh, use and uh, sometimes during weekends when I'm bored I just put it running and I ask some uh, stupid questions. Sometimes I actually get quite interesting insights because beneath all that personality there is a lot of intelligence uh, based on not AI, not, not really the kind of machine, but remember that the machine is trained by all of your code and my code. So the machine is trained with the wisdom and insights of kind of people. So I'm tapping into collective wisdom, best of what people have to offer. If I ask good questions, I get good answers. So my video is done. As I mentioned, uh, remember to click the like button, uh, drop comments, uh, requests, uh, questions in the feedback section of my video and uh, grab the code, play with it if you like, subscribe to my channel uh, for more content like this one. And uh, finally, I will leave uh, one last question here for Jarvis. You can already leave if you like to, but this is a question I got very uh, frighteningly good answer recently, so I will repeat it and we'll see what we get today. I made Today I made this a little bit wilder, so let's see. Almighty oh, Jarvis, what are the dangers of using too much AI assistance when producing your own code? Let's see. Oh, my dear apprentice, you come seeking wisdom in the treacherous seas of artificial intelligence, where the siren call of convenience beckons us towards the rocky shores of incompetence. The dangers of over-reliance on AI, you query. Well, let me bestow upon you the enlightenment you so desperately crave. Firstly, indulge in too much AI assistance and contemplate the atrophy of your most precious asset your mind. Coding is art, it's a craft, the skill honed over countless hours of frustration and eureka moments. AI becomes the crutch for the indolent, the excuse for the slothful. Rely too heavily on it, and your problem-solving muscles wither away, leaving you helplessly dependent on your silicon overlord. Secondly, let us not forget the timeless adage, garbage in, garbage out. AI is but a tool, a reflection of our own brilliance and stupidity. Feed it nonsense, expect nonsense. It can simplify the mundane, automate the tedious, but dare you entrust your creativity to it. You risk birthing a Frankenstein's monster of code, stitched together with the threads of logic but devoid of the soul of ingenuity. Furthermore, becoming the puppet of an algorithm may lead you down the garden path away from understanding. When the AI whispers sweet nothings of optimised code into your ear, will you heed its words without question? Will you know why the code works, or, more poignantly, why it fails when it inevitably does? Without comprehension, you become but a spectator in the Colosseum of development, watching the lines of bouts ravage your project. Lastly, Let's ponder on the philosophical quandary. If AI does all our coding, are we truly developers or merely caretakers of a digital zoo? The danger lies not in the code we produce, but in the essence of our role being usurped by the very tools we created to serve us. So go forth, wary of the AI seductive allure, and code as if your very humanity depended on it. For in the grand tapestry of existence, the threads we weave with our own hands are the ones that truly matter. Or, you know, you could ignore all that, hit the easy button, and watch your career prospects dwindle the choice is yours, O seeker of the path of least resistance. Yeah, that's it. So I'm, I'm dumping my code in the Git repository. Thanks for watching the video. I hope, uh, I hope you got something out of this one. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.